Hello guys, welcome back to Python the series of basics. As in previous tutorial, I talked about list, tuple, set and their properties and methods. And in this tutorial, we will be learning about wait in function for these three collection data types. While we are talking about collection data types, there were so many wait in functions are available. But here I'm going to talk about the wait in function which are most often used with these collection data types. And these functions are all, any, enumerate, length, max, min, shorted, and so on. So let's dive bit deep and see how the functionalities of these built in function really work in case of different collection data type. So, first create a list with random element. So, let's create a list, list one, and put a random element in this list and put a string and zero. And close it now print this list and run it so it prints a list but before that first let's talk about the iteration because we're gonna use this concept of iteration while we are explaining all the within function so iteration is a process of taking one element at a time in a row of element for that we're gonna use for loop so let's try out say for i in list one and it's gonna do what it's gonna take one element at a one time and then move to next so let's print this and run it see it prints one element at a time and then move to next and then print the next and same process goes for the rest one so in this iteration we iterate through the list and print one element at a time and then move to next now let's try out the all function over a given list so all function basically do what it will return true when all the elements in a given iteratable are true if not then it will return false so what it really means for that let me comment that out just highlight the all portion and press alt 3 so what does this mean all element in a iteratable are true to understood that let's convert each element of a given list into its boolean form for that we're going to use a bool function and for that we create another list called list 2 and it's a uh, empty list and now what we're going to do we're going to iterate through this list one and we convert each and every element of this list one into its boolean form and then we append that element into list two so let's do this and say for i in list one and we iterate through this list and then we say list two append through this we're going to append the element into list two now we're going to do what we're going to convert the i element into its boolean form we say fool i and this way we convert the element into its boolean form then we append that element into a list now let's do say print list 2 and let's run it see it outputs every non-zero element is true while the zero one is false so that's what the all function demands so all function gonna return if every element in our list is true then it's gonna return true while even a single element is false then it's gonna return false and in this case it's gonna return what false so let's do this say print all and then list and run it it's gonna return false i'm damn sure so see it returned false and now if we remove that zero element in from our list now it's gonna return true so this is all about all function and it's gonna return true when every element in our list is true while even a single element is false it's gonna return false so similarly there's another function called any and any is just the vice versa of all function so if we say print any now any gonna do what any gonna return true even a single element in our list is true so let's do this say list one and at this position it's gonna return true both of these functions now if we in input one zero in our list now it's gonna do what it's gonna return true still but the all function return false so the functionality of any and all are just totally opposite so let me comment them out and move on to the next function called enumerate so enumerate function do what it adds a counter to an iteratable and returns an enumerate object means what see we have a list of three number if we run enumerate function over this list now it's gonna do what it's gonna add a counter to this list means it's gonna add a number to this list 
and it suggests that this number is present at this position and it fits similar like indexing so when we run an enumerate function over this list and it's gonna do what it gonna say is zero it at this position and first one and second one so this counter is added to all the element of this list so let's run it and try to see what really happened so let's say print enumerate and say list one and let's run it it's gonna return an enumeratable object see it is an enumerate object at this position now if we want to convert this enumerate object into a list tuple or set then we have to be use its method and so those methods like list and to tuple and to set we're gonna use these three methods and we'll convert that to enumerate object into a particular data type so let's convert that particular enumerate into a list and before that we say let's assign a new variable to that say new new equal to this and let's remove it now we're gonna do what we're gonna apply a list to that new variable so we say that to print list and new see the counter is added to each element so we're gonna do what here you see that counter is begins from zero and this is by default we can change it and for that we have to be say generally enumerate function accept two parameter one is iteratable and another one is start and for that we say from where we want to start if we specify nothing then by default it start from zero now if we say one then it's gonna count from one like one two three four five so let's run it and see the counter begin from one two three it will change from first position to second position there's a thing that to, we can do one thing is that we can't directly print the enumerated object but we can iterate through it so say for i in new and now we're gonna do what print i so let's run it see the iteration of each element is been done so there's a counter added to that element and iteration has happened one element at a one time and the next one in the row is length so let me comment that first so length is a function which tells about the length of a particular string so we say print length and list one and now it's going to return what it's going to return the length of a list says five so it's really helpful when we are dealing with a large string and that time we really want to know the length of a particular string and we already talk about this function a lot so let's move to the next one and that one is max so, so let me comment that and max is a function say max and max is a function through which we get to know about the maximum value present in our list so we say print max and we want to maximum value of list one and let's run it so it outputs oh if there's a string is present that's why it's showing continuously error so let's remove that string because it's not an integer so let's put a one more integer say 45 and now run it so it says that 45 is the maximum value in our list and similarly there's another function called min through which we get to know what the minimum value present in our list we say print main list one and let's run it and it says zero is the minimum value present in our list so and these functions are really helpful when we directly want to do the maximum and minimum value so we use this function and we'll find the minimum and maximum value present in our list so let's comment that out and the next one in the row is shorted so shorted function gonna do what it short the list of a given iteratable so we say print and short it and we want short the list to one and run it see the whole list is now shorted in an ascending order means 0 1 2 45 all the elements are arranged in an ascending order now the question came around what is the difference between shorted built-in function and a short method that we already used in a previous lecture now after shorting let's print the list to one again print list to one and run it see the list one is not shorted it is present in its present form that's a difference between shorted and short so let me show you what i mean now if i run a short method after that say print and list one dot short and now run it so it's gonna print none because the whole list is not sorted and it's present in a different order so if you print list one again and see list one and now the whole list one is arranged in an ascending order so basically the main difference is shorted returns a shorted list leaving the original list unaffected while short method affect the original list and return a mutable list of shorted items 
and that's the most important difference. Now here we have a one particular problem that we have a two method for one particular job. So when you really have to be run your code bit faster that time you generally prefer short because it doesn't create a copy while shorted function create a copy that's it bit kind of slower compared to short and the next function in the row is sum. So if we want to return the summation of all element present in our list for that we're going to use sum function. So we say print sum and say list one and run it. See the sum of whole list is 53. So this is how all the waiting functions are work in case of list. Now what the way we perform all these waiting function in case of list. We're going to try out all those in case of tuple and sat. And for tuple we just replace the square bracket with a round bracket and it's a tuple. So say this. And for a moment just don't replace the name or the when name of variable from list to tube just because otherwise we really have to change all the names from top to the bottom. So we let it that way but it's a tuple. So let's run it and see it's a tuple 1, 2, 5, 0, 4, 2, 5. All the elements are now in tuple. Next we're gonna run an all function in a tuple. See the all function says false because there's a one zero element is present in a tuple. Similarly if we run any function in this see it says true. Now we enumerate through this whole tuple using enumerate function and let's convert this enumerate object from list you know, but here we have to replace this from list to two and now it's in the form of tuple something is happened sorry it's a tuple now it's converted in the form of tuple and all the counters are attached to each of the element similarly if we want to the know the length of tuple we say this because the length of our tuple is five and next one is if we want to know the maximum value present in our tuple we say run it and it says 45 the way it works in case of list similarly in case of tuple and once we run it for minimum and it says zero and then if we short the whole list using shorted function it short the whole list and similarly we're going to perform all the built-in function from top to bottom and now next we say that if we change this list to a set and for that we just replace those round bracket with the curly braces and run the whole process is similar one so let's run it see the whole thing is changed but we have to be changed over here right now is that if we want if we want set in place of tuple we say set and run this and all the way from top to bottom every functionality is happening in similar one so this is how we perform all the built-in function in case of tuple in case of list or in case of set and most of the functionalities work pretty similar in each of the case. We have to just change few parameters, that's it. Most of the things are pretty similar. And the next one is that if you really want to know whether a particular element is a member of that particular iteratable is or not, and we call this test as a membership test, and we say print, and we want that uh, whether the one is a member of this set or if not, we see that one is present in our set, so we say one, in list one and let's run it it's gonna print true oh wait a minute let me comment the other section so now run it and it says true because one is a member of that particular set and if we want to know that uh, we say a random number called 34 and we want that this number is a member of that set or if not no it says false similarly we can perform the all things using list and tuple so let's convert the set into a tuple or list and run it and all the thing goes very similar way. So this is how we perform functionalities and try out membership test over lens and tuple and set. And one advice from my side is that guys, please try out all those code by yourself because you cannot learn anything by just reading. You really have to practice it a lot. So try out by yourself and thanks for watching. See you in the next video.